In this video, I'm gonna try every single Clips Heritage speaker and tell you which one is the best. Clips was started by Paul W. Clips within the confines of a tin shed in Hope, Arkansas in 1946. For the first two years, Paul Clips would build his now famous Clips horns by himself. And in 1948, Clips would get his first factory, a former telephone exchange building, and hire his first employee. Today, that factory is still standing, but now as a Klipsch Museum. The manufacturing for all Klipsch Heritage products has remained in Hope, Arkansas for almost 60 years, and Klipsch products rarely changed, and over the years, few new products have been introduced. The current lineup of products is the Klipsch Heresy, the Forte, the Cornwall, the La Scala, and the Klipsch Horn, and today we are going to try every one of those and afterwards we're gonna tell you what sound each one is going to give you what amps we recommend with them and what the best value in the line is and I'm going to tell you why I would buy each one over the others that's right I'm even going to give you a reason to buy the heresy over the clips horn but to make it more interesting I must follow the following rules so the first rule I cannot talk about price the second rule, I can't just say one sounds better than the other. And finally, I have to give at least one reason to buy each model over every other in the line. So let's get started. First introduced in 1946, and now on its sixth iteration, this is the Clips Horn. You're probably not asking yourself this, but you may. Why would you buy the Clips Horns over the Heresies? The Heresies were actually originally made to be the center channel speaker of the Clips Horn. So you notice that wood grain pattern there, and that would be the only thing that I would really compare this to the Forte. This has a lot better look aesthetically on the front. And again, you're probably not comparing the Clips Horn to the Forte and trying to decide between the two. You're probably at least looking at the La Scala or the Cornwall. But if you're looking at the Forte and the Clips Horn, the aesthetics and the amount of wood on the front of this one, yeah, that makes a difference. So if you're debating between the Klipsch horns and the corn walls, you're probably saying, well, the corn walls can go anywhere against the wall. Well, so can these. Unlike the original models that were only meant for the corners, the new Klipsch horns can go against the wall as well. You'd probably need a pretty big room though. The corn walls are massive, but they're only a fraction of this size. I don't know how much they weigh, but it's a lot. I almost feel it came on two pallets. Do you remember if it came on two pallets? Yes, it did. Is that the box you locked me up in in the back behind the store and left me for dead? Yes, it was. So, I guess if you want your kids to have a big play for it box, you could also get one of these because the Cornwall box is just slightly smaller. Now, this is the closest comparison you're going to get in any of these Clips Heritage speakers, and that's going to be the Clips Horn versus the La Scala, and you're probably debating between the two because they're totally different sounding speakers, but the Clips Horn is going to give you more of a live sound. It's going to be fuller and golf the room more and just give you that concert feel. So if you like that, then go with the Clips Horn. Now, the Clips Horns originally got their name because of just that. They had to be set in the corners of your room, and they could not go against the wall because they were open baffled in the back. It's not the case anymore, but that's how they originally got their name. Steve from Louisville, Kentucky said, I upgraded from my Klipsch AL5s to the K-Horn AK6, and it was worth every penny. This is the Klipsch La Scala, and if you're comparing it to the Klipsch Heresy, and you're probably not, this is much more of a statement piece for around the house. It's huge. It's lower to the floor than the, than the Klipsch horns, but if you have small children or pets, it's a great hiding spot. They can get down in here, crawl back behind where the wolfer is. Okay, a small child is probably not going to be able to do that, but a pet could probably fit back there. Now, if you're comparing the Klipsch La Scala to the Klipsch Forte, you're going to notice the mid-range on the La Scala is much more defined. A way better mid-range, and I mean, really a lot more speaker than the Forte. But you're probably also not comparing the two. You're probably more comparing the La Scalas to the Cornwalls, which might here behind you. See those? That's the Cornwalls. These are probably the two speakers where if you're like in that Cornwall range and you're like, should I spend the extra money on the La Scalas? Because it's a big price difference. Why would you do that? So the first difference is the La Scala is actually a two-piece speaker. Two parts here. This one sits on top of this part. That's a very uneducated way of saying that the horn sits on top of the bass driver. But it is a two-piece set. You're going to get more definition in this speaker than you would the Cornwall. It's going to be a less in-your-face speaker than the Cornwall is. It's going to be more defined and audiophile for that concerts and the classical music and the notes and everything. So that's where you're going to get a little less in-your-face with the action and a little more refined. The comparison you're probably trying to make 
is the La Scala versus the K-Horn. For people that like a more refined experience, that's where the La Scalas are gonna come in. They're gonna give you that more like low noise, more detail, audiophile type sound, rather than the live stage sound that the K-Horns are gonna give you. But the Buffalo Audiophile doesn't agree with me with his five-star review. He says, if you wanna invite the live musicians into your house, get a pair of La Scalas, and when your guests leave, they will think that they're coming from the back of the speaker. Look at the size of that grill. That is a massive grill. And it just, it ma look at that. Let's watch, listen. You know, if you're comparing these to the Heresies, just think of it this way. The Cornwalls are like a massive Heresy. So everything is gonna be bigger. Now, if you're comparing these to the Fortes, which are right over there, yeah, those. These are gonna be a lot easier to position around your room. Not only will they work in bigger rooms, but you can put them close to the wall, out from the wall, because the base ports are down here on the bottom and everything's coming out the front, unlike the Fortes where the base driver's in the back. You can literally put these anywhere. Now, if you're comparing the Cornwalls to the La Scalas, the Cornwalls are gonna be a little boomier. I mean, all the base is coming right out of the front, a little less analytical, but you're gonna get a nice live boomy sound out of these compared to the La Scalas. This one's gonna be kind of stupid, but it is what it is. If you're comparing the Cornwalls to the Klipsch horns, you know, it's got a lot of the same sound characteristics like that live boomy sound, but the Cornwalls are easier to use for an audio rack. So a component such as this Cambridge Edge can sit right on top your Cornwall and it's a lot easier to place and get to where on the Klipsch horn, it's taller and it's gonna be harder to get to that component. So I love the Cornwalls because you can literally use them as hi-fi racks, kind of. I mean, I use them for hi-fi racks. You can put plants on them. A lot of people bring in corn walls that are, you know, 30 years old with rings all over the top. A lot of the clip speakers, you can, I mean, you could do that. You want a nice plant stand, you can use the Forte for that as well. I, I wouldn't recommend it though. Hi-Fi Fiesta in Germany said, after many years of searching for the perfect speaker, I finally found it. The Cornwall 4 speakers exceeded my expectations. Dynamic spatiality and dry bass, that's exactly what my ears need. The workmanship is beautiful and the finish very American. I love these clips and I want to grow old with them. The American clips, very American, made in America. Look at that grill. I was gonna show you how nice the grills are on the clip speakers. Just sticks right on. Magnetic grills are great. So if you're shopping for the Forte compared to the Heresy, it's gonna give you much better bass response because if you flip it around, you're gonna see this bass driver down here on the back and that's really gonna help with that. Now, in comparison to the Cornwalls, these are gonna give you more fun with placement, right? Because these Cornwalls, everything's on the front. But if you go on the Forte, you got this bass driver on the back. So it depends where you're sticking it against the wall to how it's gonna sound. So you can actually adjust like an EQ, the sound of your speaker by how far away from the wall that it actually is. But that's not the reason most people choose the Fortes over the Cornwalls. The real reason is the size. So this is a huge speaker. I mean, it takes up a lot of real estate on your wall, but the Forte does not. And then being closely priced, if you want something that's a little smaller, you go with the Forte. And that brings us to why you would choose this over the La Scala. And in reality, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, this is a lot smaller footprint than the La Scala, which is going to take up a lot of space. Now, comparing this to the Klipsch horn, and you're probably not. You're probably not comparing this to the Klipsch horn. But this is going to be a lot more fun to position. Because who wants to constantly move a 100 plus pound Klipsch horn? Actually, it's probably 200 plus pound Klipsch horn speaker. When you can just slide the Forte. They got little sliders down there that make them easily... Slidable. I don't think I can move the clip horn with my foot. MT Bloomers in Mizalua, Montana said he's 68 years old. In high school, my buddy bought a pair of K-horns. We were the luckiest young men on the planet. That classic music is etched in my memory. Noting their size, it seems impossible. They sound like K-horns. Clips rules! Now, a lot of people are choosing between the Klipsch Heresy and the Forte. And as you see here, this Heresy is not like most Heresies. It has a stand, and I prefer my Heresies with a stand. And what that can do is where the Forte sit right on the ground, the Heresies, then you can have a stand to put your albums underneath, depending on the stand you get. And 
Not that the one we use can do that, but you get the picture. You would also choose the Heresy over the Forte if you wanted to include a subwoofer in your setup. So not having that extra bass driver in the back allows you to get a little bit more response and frequency range to that subwoofer and just keep the highs and the mids in the speaker. And if you have a smaller room, you may choose the Heresies over the Cornwall because the Cornwalls are probably too big for your small room. Now, La Scala's and Heresies aren't really much of a comparison, but... If you're like Chipotle... How do you go about pronouncing the name of this restaurant chain? Chipotle. Chipotle. And put clip speakers above the, uh, the line thing where they make your food. As you can see in this picture, you can see the outline from all the base. It'd be pretty hard to do that with La Scala's. So that might be a reason for choosing Heresies. And compared to the clip horns, they're easier to lift. That's all I got for that one. An anonymous person in Rye, New Hampshire said that they owned the Clips Cornwalls for years and were surprised when they bought the Heresies how much they actually sounded like the Cornwalls. All right, now I know all you guys are asking what these speakers sound like because I didn't talk about that at all when I ran around climbing in them. So for that portion of the video, I brought Spencer and Tom. So we'll get started and talk about the Heresies. Tell me about how the Heresies sound to you. So I feel as though the Heresies are really, really open. I think they pack really good mid-range, good bass response, and treble throughout. I feel like the detail is kind of unparalleled, and if you like horns, they are great. The clarity and the spatialization, the, the stereo space that you get from them is phenomenal. They're still very warm and just very crisp and, and punchy. You like yeah. them on stands or you like them on the floor? You know, the floor is the classic look. You know, you got the whiskey glass speakers on the floor. What, what kind of stands would you put them on? I usually put them on the Linton stands. Yeah, some straight stands. Yeah, put some vinyl underneath. So what about the Fortes? I like the Fortes a lot. I think they give you more mid-range. I think they fill it in. I think you get more presence in the mid-range. Bass response is off the charts. I love the Fortes. Yeah, huge jump in warmth and just low end when you go from the Heresies to the Fortes. They definitely are just going to fill the room with just all that richness. You, you lose some of the spatialization that the heresies get, but just the rich mids is phenomenal. Do you like to play with them? I mean, position them around the room with this. <laughs> well, you know, they're kind of fixed where, where they would like to be. Well, no, that's the thing with the four days. You can do whatever you want. Like, if you pull them away from the wall, it's going to change the base. If you put them closer, it's going to make you more. You know, you can, you can play around with them. So the person that likes to play with their stuff mm -hmm. would really like the four days, I think. All right, so what about the corn walls? Yeah. Corn walls are where it's at for me. Again, it feels like twice a forte. It feels like it opens up entirely. It feels like the depth of the room is totally changed. The bass is crazy. It is an old school speaker that will fill a room. No, I mean, the corn walls, they're kind of the, the, the perfect sweet spot of just filling the room, not taking up the entire space. You can still fit some bookshelves or whatever, but I mean, just classic, classic sound. I mean, it's, yeah, perfect. All right, Lascalas. So Lascalas to me are totally different. I feel like they're more of an intimate speaker where I feel like the Cornwalls to the Klipsch horns are more similar. I feel like Lascalas are their own beast. I feel like it brings you in. They're speakers that like kind of soften everything up. They almost in some ways don't feel like a horn, but they give you the presence of one. And I feel like, again, it's it's a speaker that you just want to listen to all day long. You know, at, at that point, you're getting to these things that are really, really filling up a big room. And when you're sitting in a sweet spot, it's phenomenal. The Los Scalas are definitely warm. Like, they have that warmth, similar to, like, kind of the Fortes. You know, it's just very rich and, and warm, but also very spacey in those beautiful wood cabinets. And last but not least, the Club Shorts. They will rock a room. I mean... Any room that you put them in, they're going to fill it in entirely. I mean, the horns, the presence, the clarity that you're going to get is, again, it's kind of unparalleled. Like, there's nothing quite like it. And I feel like, again, the depth and the bass response that you're going to get is crazy. I feel like any type of music excels in it. If you listen to jazz, though, you're going to feel like you're at the bar watching a jazz concert. They're wild. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's like having a concert hall in your house where it's just, it's very live. The spatialization is just phenomenal. They're the speaker that I'll be listening to and it's just the most, just like immaculate. They're probably my favorite in the line. They're a lot, but I mean, very just huge, huge sound. All right, so now we promised you that we would tell you what amps we use on all these speakers or which ones that we prefer. So 
Guys, what would you use on heresies? Honestly, for heresies, I like the League 230. I think the thing just like rocks. I think it's plenty of power, 75 watts a channel. I feel like, again, the kind of tonality blends really well and it gives you that vintage aesthetic. The thing is sweet. For the heresies, I, I do like a Marantz vintage receiver. I just think that they're rich and warm and buttery and that's a great combo with the heresies. I was gonna say the same thing actually, so I'm glad you went there. All right, so for the Fortes, all right, Fortes, I'm going Parasound, hint six. Yeah. I think the thing <laughs> rocks. I think it's, I think it kind of gives you that warmth to it. It's plenty of power. It's a great, great pairing, honestly. Yeah, no, that's really what I wanted. That, yeah, because the Forte is just so warm and rich and the Parasound is just clean and just a really good power supply. And it's, you know, it doesn't so, get in the way of the Forte. So what about the Cornwalls then? Because that's what I would have paired the Parasound with. But what would you pair with the Cornwall? If I'm going to get away from the Parasound, I, I would go a nice Yamaha. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> We're all in agreement I on know, this. Yeah. Sorry, this was not talked it's about probably before. how you should set these up. But um, Oh, like talk about it beforehand <laughs> instead of just being like, and what do you think about this one? <laughs> Yeah, dude, like a 3200 would just be beautiful. You know, yeah. with the big VU meters right there in the Cornwalls. Kind of price matches the Yamaha yeah. and, like, and the Cornwalls as well. So that kind of hits right on. Because they're so sensitive, I mean, you could go with a 1200 and be totally happy. I mean, it's going to give you that really natural sound. And the Cornwalls are so beautiful big and they're so open again i feel like it would just really complement the characteristics of the speaker the thing would be sweet all right now here's where we're all going to disagree what would you pair with the la scalas accuphase e380 i think that would be absolutely killer so i'm, I'm probably going to go the opposite way I, I feel that the neutral natural sound of the luxman like a 507 would pair really well with the warmth of the la scalas i'd probably have to listen to it first because luxman I, there are some you know i, I definitely like a, a really good pair with that but in my mind those are two opposites that would really complement each other really well and the clips horns i would go accuphase i would do the total opposite so you you have like the honey of the accuphase would pair really well it, it would really fill out the uh the horns i think the luxman 509 would be the one oh, just yeah. because i think it would it would be a step up you'd have more power which the horns don't need but i think again you would hear everything i think if you put the luxman on the horns you're just gonna be blown away again it's gonna feel like you're at that concert you're never gonna want to leave all right so now everybody is going to be saying at this point in time we didn't say anything about tube amps and that's kind of what they're known for you don't need a lot of power they're very efficient whatever 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 you want to have tube amps with it and we do have tube amps on a lot of the clips product but do you prefer a solid state with clips or do you prefer a tube amp I like the idea of tube amps. I like the sound characteristics a lot. I think they give you that warmth. They give you kind of this butteriness that some solid states don't give you. Mm -hmm. But me personally, I don't like the hassle with tubes all the time. That's really the only downside to them. You know, they need maintenance. You got to keep up with them if tubes get replaced. I think it's a really cool thing to also play with though. They if get you're dusty. Likes to, they do get dusty. <laughs> if you're someone that likes to tinker with stuff a lot, tubes are for you. You can mess with those. You can mess with the sound stage. That's a, that's a great point because there are tinkerers and then there are me. Not even looking at the, sp the sp specific speakers. I am kind of more of a two preamp, solid state amp guy in general. Oh. You gotta mix them both. <laughs> I mean, tubes with the Clips Heritage, it's an amazing sound, but at the same time, I mean, we had the uh, the Cambridge, the Edge mono blocks. Yeah. Like and I just thought it was so, so, so clean that you know it's solid state with the clips heritage stuff does work really, i love really the fun. cambridge with the clips i don't know why you guys didn't mention that like most <laughs> of them because the edge the cambridge edge stuff on the clips that's what we have hooked to the corn walls yeah it's just sick yeah it was it was so clean it was yeah. the cleanest sound ever do you guys remember why the heresies are called the heresies uh, you know i yeah. do yeah I because it was considered a heresy too because originally they weren't horns that is incorrect because oh. they're on the floor no, so uh, the original heresy was a center channel speaker, uh, the center channel. and the reason it was heresy was because it was not a corner horned speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, when everything that Paul Clips made before that was a corner horn. All right, so now next trivia: Why is it called the Cornwall? Oh, well, Cornwall is because they can go in the corner of the wall. That is also incorrect. He was very close, but he got ahead of himself. Tom. <laughs> 
Is it because it can go in the corner or the wall? It is correct. That is correct. <laughs> oh, yeah, kind of that is very correct. <laughs> Why was the forte invented? To give deeper mid-range spots. So that is incorrect. The forte was actually invented, and Tom's not going to get this, so I'm just going to go yeah. ahead. Right? Do you know? No, I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so the forte was invented because at, during the 80s, Paul Clips wanted something that would match with CDs and that digital sound and home theater, so that's where they came up with the forte so let's go to the la scala okay. where does that name come from so the first iteration was the bell named after his wife that wasn't my question so i don't know i don't know i have no idea something to do with italy yeah something to do with italy yeah what is italy so you're both wrong again <laughs> so the la scalas were actually named after that concert hall in italy where the stairs were named after the music notes or the La Scala's, if that's correct. I got it, got it, some gray area there. But it was named after that because they were primarily originally made to be used in concert halls. Mm -hmm. And I got nothing for the clip shorn. Well, I don't have an answer then. Oh, there we go. All right. <laughs> so you guys should ask us some questions because we probably have the answers. I probably have the answers. They may have the answers. <laughs> yeah, I probably don't. You know YouTube already knows what video you want to watch next. Well, it's this one right here. So if you like the video you just watched, you're absolutely going to love this one.